Well, I got another one for you guys. This is a 1996 Toshiba satellite. That is in amazing condition. I mean, this machine, if I didn't know any better, I would say it just came out of the box. It's a Pentium 75 with a single 1.44 meg floppy drive. It has uh, a parallel and a VGA port, and one serial and one PS2 port. There is no internal sound card for the, in, in this machine or any uh, audio synthesis boards or anything. Oh yeah, and it has two Type 2 and Type 3 cards slots. Well, open it up. It is a Satellite 105 CS. Still has the original Pentium and Energy Star stickers. The keyboard is immaculate. Wasn't even dirty. It was. There's no wear marks. There are no wear marks on any of the keys. It is, for all intents and purposes, brand new. Um. I had to take these, and I'm going to remake these actually, these are uh, screw covers, because the um, I wanted to investigate how bad the, well, let me show you what I mean. All Toshiba laptops that I've ever seen on eBay or in, in, in my own possession, my own collection actually, have had this problem, where they have little stress cracks right by, it's always the left hinge. That's where it starts. When it gets a little bit worse, the um, the copper or brass inserts that are molded into the plastic that the hinge actually screws to, uh, those start to stress out and they and they break apart. So I wanted to take the display housing apart and investigate just how bad the damage was. And it looks like it's entirely fixable. I'm going to make another video of how I'm going to fix this uh, once I find the materials I need. And when I do fix it, it should be good for the remaining life of the machine. But as it is now, it doesn't really, the screen is nice and tight, everything is tight, it's really not really a problem yet. Uh, like the all, like all the original uh, satellite series notebooks, it does have an eraser head mouse. The correct term is, I believe, AccuPoint, which was an IBM trademark. So, let's go ahead and turn it on. Yes. I just turned it on without plugging it in. This 15-year-old laptop has one of the best batteries of any notebook I have ever found. It runs for two hours on the dot. Two freaking hours uh, on a full charge, which is incredible for a machine of this age. Even when it was new, that's just incredible. Um, <clears throat> I just discovered the resume battery is dead. Underneath the keyboard there's a there's two th thin battery packs. One of them is for the resume function, one of them is for the system clock. And it appears that the resume battery is no longer functioning. That's okay. I don't really need that anyway. So it runs Windows 95. It is still running on the original system build. And um which is incredible in itself. This machine has never been rebuilt in its lifetime. So it still has the Toshiba Restore Utilities, or um, Disk Creation Wizards, so that I can recreate all of the original system software um, right from the machine. So if I ever have to rebuild it, that's not a problem. Uh, the battery utility appears to run partially off the resume battery, so it's unable to determine how full the battery is at this point. See, there's a question mark. So, we're not going to worry about that for this video. Um, it did have the previous owner's documents on it. I've deleted those. I'm not going to rebuild the machine because it's really, there's no need to. Uh, one thing I've noticed is this machine was never connected to the internet, ever. 
So there's no real data corruption. <laughs> the internet causes corruption, or at least it did heavily back then. Uh, it has Microsoft Money, Microsoft Golf 2.0, Works 4.0. I installed Paint Shop Pro just because I have that myself. And I installed PKZip 16. It also has the Toshiba utility stuff. Now I'm going to show you a couple of things that Toshiba has installed that are quite intriguing, especially 15 years later. Number one is the Toshiba catalog. This is the Toshiba Noteworthy catalog for all of the <clears throat> excuse me, Toshiba Noteworthy products. The catalog is dated 1995 and uh, and it shows you all of the different notebook accessories that you could buy back then. Like you could buy this X jack which is the slide out jack um, 14 4 modem for just $169. I'm going to move forward to the next product. It's the same thing. <clears throat> this is a cellular modem. This, these modems were actually quite popular back then. Um, they would allow you to interface with your cell phone so you could use the cell phone as a data, um, as a portable data connection. The thing is, and nowadays we have these tethering options, but it doesn't use a, a dial-up technology. They actually use the Notebooks 3G network, which gives you basically mobile broadband. But in the old days, the modem would actually use the telephone's um, telephone function, so it would dial out. So that would mean you were using, not only were you using airtime minutes, um, but the connection was awfully slow, especially if you had interference. That was a $355 option. Whoa. Ethernet card. Type 2 Ethernet card, 10 base T, 169. There was another one here, too. Why can't I go forward? No, we're just... Um, Ethernet modem combination card, $379. Now, here's the memory prices. Okay, this is system memory. This laptop does not use um, the type of memory that you might think it uses. It uses a proprietary memory card that takes up like a, a playing card sized area underneath the uh, motherboard. And these cards were extremely expensive. A 4 megabyte memory expansion costs $429, but that's not all. An 8 meg, 8 megabyte costs 579 bucks. That's a lot of freaking money. Anyway, let's take a look at a few other things. The machine does have 8 megabytes of internal memory, and it runs Windows 95 just fine. Um, one of the reasons is there's more than enough hard disk space. It has a 529 megabyte hard drive. Back in those days, that was actually quite reasonable. In fact, we have 211 megs free. And there's a lot of stuff on here that could be removed. Um, here's the Toshiba Max Time Utility that I was telling you about. When this thing is functioning properly, it tells you how, exactly how much battery life you have, and it's fairly accurate, um, at least with a newer battery like this one. By that, I mean the battery was obviously not used very much. Um, but This is built exactly as I remember Windows 95 machines to be. I mean, they, it has a lot of the same software, like the Microsoft Network, which turned into MSN. Um, let's see, anything cool? It doesn't have the pinball game. That's, that came out in Windows 98. Let's see, it has the word viewer. That's pretty much all I want to show you. It's a pretty cool, lap, a pretty cool little laptop in amazing condition that I got out of the trash. Um, if you notice how thick it is when closed, it's about <clears throat> it's approximately two inches thick.
compare that to a MacBook Pro, which is about approximately half an inch thick. I mean, 0.75 inches thick. That's uh, that's quite a difference. So anyway, that's all we have for now. So enjoy. So I'm going to show you how to get to the resume battery and the clock battery. All you do is you pry up using your fingernail this little strip of plastic. And the keyboard simply lifts right up. And in here you'll find the large battery is a 7.2 volt uh, nickel metal hydride and that is your resume battery. That charges up as the machine is running and when you pull the battery out and put the machine to sleep, not in that order, um, it will store the system's memory for a, a brief period of time. And when you put the machine to sleep, that's where the, or that's how the memory is stored. And those three little button cells right there, that is your clock battery. And uh, this large metal plate is the system's heat sink. This laptop does not have any cooling fans at all. It just uses heat sinks for heat dissipation. Which I thought was unusual because I thought Pentium, the early first generation Pentiums were, were hot running little processors, but I guess not. Now we're going to take a look at the battery cover. All you do is you unlatch this, pull the cover to the side, Oops. and here is your system battery. Now this appears to be the original battery. It's an original Toshiba, and it's lasting about two hours. So, amazingly enough, it's still pretty good. This is the hard drive carrier. You just remove those two screws, slide this to the side, and your hard drive is out. Now one of the most interesting things I found about this machine is it uses an IBM hard drive, um, which I thought was unusual since Toshiba typically makes their own hard drives. But in some cases they outsource a few things to save a few bucks, I guess. I don't know. Here's the bottom label. Just an incredible, an incredible piece of uh, equipment for its age and condition. Um, there was an optional docking station and I do believe there was an optional CD-ROM drive, but it's not listed in the in that uh, accessories um, catalog I found. Um, in later models, or better and better models, I should say, the floppy drive um, is uh, either an externally mounted one, or it has a removable drive, and you can slide a CD-ROM drive in this bay. But there, this laptop wasn't designed to have a hot swappable or even user swappable drive. So, if I'm not mistaken, the um, the CD-ROM drive was an option that you had to purchase when you built the machine or when you bought the machine, so it could be built in. Um, a lot of laptops have a uh, a lever or something you can press and swap the drives out, you know, so you could have one or the other. But this was a very low end version of the satellite. So it didn't actually have that as an option. But it is heavy. My god this thing is heavy. It probably weighs 10 pounds. But like all Toshibas, it's built pretty well. Um, but again, the only gripe I have with Toshiba laptops, and this is this is something that's been bothering me for years, every time I find a satellite like this, the plastic is always extremely brittle, and there's always some dam there's always something broken on the machine, a door, a hinge here, or just cracks randomly spread out through the machine. So I'm very impressed with the condition this one is in overall. So, that's all for now. Hope you've enjoyed.